Hello, and welcome to Ditch the Dogma, the live show with your host, Paula Marie Davis. Um, if you're catching me for the second time today, we had a little te technical difficulties. Um, this is a process that I am learning as I go, but I am so excited. I am willing to work through all of the kinks and all of the craziness because I think this is such an important message that I want to share with as many women as possible. So I hope you will give me a little bit of grace and compassion as I kind of learn the technical side of going live, um, because I have a lot to say. I, I want to make a difference in this world, and I have knowledge that I want to share in community that I want to build, and I want all of you to be a part of it. So thank you for my, my little technical difficulties. We're going to go ahead and start the show and get this baby going. Welcome to Your Wellness Rebellion. It's time to remember what you already know. Reunite with your inner healer, your body. Build autonomy from the wellness industry. Implement practices that build your authority. And recognize that personal growth builds collective growth, both personally and professionally. This is the SEEK method. Sustain a connection with your inner spark in the universe. Empower your gut and intuition to carve a path that's uniquely yours. Embrace your body, listen to its whispers, and cherish it for the long haul. And kindle soulful growth and vibrate at a whole new frequency that everyone feels. Join us and become a seeker of well-being. So let's get this started. What are we talking today? What are we talking about today? Today we are talking about waist to hip ratio. This is something that I believe can change your well-being forever. Most of us are not a fan of the scale. I know I'm not a fan of the scale. I don't like scans at all, scales at all. In fact, scales, um, they trigger me. I don't know about you, but it's like I see that number and all of a sudden I go into like, am I good enough? Am I this enough? Am I that enough? Like, well, you know, I start thinking about I start looking at well-being completely different. I start focusing on the numbers versus my life and how I feel in this body and my energy levels and my sleep and all those things that really tell us more than the scale will ever tell us. So first and foremost, I want to invite you to ditch your scale for good. We don't need them. I shouldn't say we don't need them. Generally, we don't need them. Get it out of the bathroom, put it in a closet somewhere. So if for some reason you do need it, you have it. But on a daily basis, this is not a metric that we should be looking at because generally speaking, it doesn't, it's not a great indicator of our overall health. Um, if you're somebody who runs on the thinner side, that doesn't necessarily mean you're healthier. If you're someone who is stronger, um, taller, bigger, doesn't mean you're unhealthy because the number on the scale is bigger than your girlfriend's, right? So we really need to walk away from this whole idea that the scale matters and start looking at metrics that do. And that's where hip to a waist to hip ratio really comes into play. We're talking about our bodies and well-being implication, implications. That is what I like to talk about. Um, I'm like a, a nutrition geek, a body geek, uh, a movement geek, a breathwork geek. I get into all this. I've been doing it for decades. And I, I really think that there's been a change over the last few years. You know, we spent a lot of time, if you're old and gray haired, like up in the really the twiggy phase, right? Where the models were rail thin, super tall, rail thin. And it was this new definition of beauty was this skinniness. And I navigated that not so well um, in my teens and in my 20s, 30s, even into my 40s. You know, I really struggled with who am I and what is my value? And, you know, is there a difference between my body and my well-being? I thought if I was focusing on my body, then I was prioritizing my well-being. But I found as I aged that that really wasn't the case. Because if the only number that I was really using, for the most part, to judge my overall well-being was the scale, I was being misled in so many different ways. So I want our conversation today to be focused on well-being, not necessarily what your body looks like as far as it defining you or what it all weighs. You know what? I'm getting ahead of myself. So let me let me pull back to my outline here so I, I don't like go off the track. 
and, and stay a little bit more focused. So why is it that waist to hip ratio is so important to me? Waist to hip ratio is actually an indicator. It provides a number, a metric of that you can tie directly to your metabolic and cardiovascular health. Whereas the scale, you, you really can't do that. There was a time in my life where I weighed under 140 pounds. My BMI was below average. I had muscle tone. I had strong arms, strong legs on the leaner side. Um, my weight numbers on that scale, you know, I checked off all the boxes. Yet I was having metabolic and cardiovascular issues. The only indicator that nobody was talking about, like my doctors were looking at my glucose. It was, it was good. My doctors were looking at my weight. They were checking out how much I worked out. They were, they were, as you're doing all the things, you know, this hypertension issue, this, this has got to be a genetic thing. And I was like, well, wait a minute, you know, I genetics, you know, I had, there's a, a doctor that I really like. And, and she says all the time that genetics may excuse the gun reference, but genetics may be the, um, a bullet in your gun. Okay. It's there. Um, there's, uh, several different spots for bullets. So you may not have one in, you know, a, uh, a, a ammo in every barrel. I don't know. I get confused, but anyway, her point was that in order for a gun to go off, you have to pull the trigger, right? And just because we have this genetic predisposition, which I did have, doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to have this disease. Genetics, for the most part, are less than 7% carryover. It's our lifestyle that plays the biggest role. So pulling that trigger is what really makes the difference. So I wanted to wind things back up. And I was like, well, hold off a minute. There's got to be something that I'm missing. And a very wise woman said to me, what about your waist to hip ratio? And at the time, my waist to hip ratio was not good. My waist was actually bigger than my hips. It's something that I didn't really let bother me because, well, there's compression leggings from Lululemon. And in addition, I got to stop with the thumbs up. Compression leggings from Lululemon. And, and then there's also tunics, right? So there's way to camouflage our middle uh, make it look flatter than it is, spanks, things of that nature. And because my weight was good and because I worked out and let's face it, I had five kids. So like I expected my abdominal area to be a little, you know, mushy and gooey. It, it, it just didn't. I was like, yeah, so what? I've got a little bit. I don't have six pack apps. And she was like, well, hold off. There's a big range between belly fat and six pack apps. She said, you don't have to have six pack abs, but we really need to be um, cognizant. We need to really be aware of and paying attention to the visceral fat on your abdomen. So in my case, I'm a perfect example where the scale said I was healthy, but my body said I wasn't because I was having high blood pressure and I did have a lot percentage wise visceral fat around my belly. So we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk today about how the hip to waist ratio impacts and is an indicator of metabolic health and that it's also um, an indicator for cardiovascular disease. The scale, on the other hand, not so much, right? What we really like about waist to hip ratio and the reason that I talk about it so much is because of its predictive value. It is an indicator. We know now there are studies, and if you want, I can share the studies with you. Most people don't want me to read studies to them on uh, YouTube or on Instagram or LinkedIn, so I'm going to bypass that for now. But you can go, just Google it. Google it, hip to waist, waist to hip ratio, w, um, WHR, and get the science. There are leading studies that are telling us that when we have visceral fat around our abdomen that extends beyond our hips, that we are increasing our chances of heart attack and stroke, uh, diabetes, Alzheimer's, which is now considered type three diabetes, um, insulin resistance, hormone imbalance, crazy cravings, you name it, it's all tied in there. So here we have this one metric. It has predictive value, yet no one is talking about it. And I think that no one's talking about it because there's no money to be made on waist to hip ratio. One, you, if you change your lifestyle and you have a healthy waist to hip ratio, well, then there's nothing for you to buy in the wellness industry, right? 
And the tool that we use for waist to hip ratio is a tape measure. It's not a wearable device. It's not some expensive tool. It's something that you can get at the Michaels, the Joanne Fabrics, the Walmart, and the Myers for just a couple dollars. And I believe that this is why the wellness industry is not talking about waist to hip ratio. And that's why it's so important to me to bring this to all of you. Because I don't believe well-being should be something that you have to make a certain amount of money to have or to be aware of or to make it a priority in your life. It should just be a decision that you want to be well, that the longevity of your body matters to you. And there should be tools and knowledge that we can use. So many of us go into Dr. Google, as I like to call it, whenever we're looking for information which is and it, you have to be careful. You have to have you, you, you don't put your critical thinking cap on, but there's resources there. When it comes to this age of devices for well-being, they're all pretty expensive. Now I have some, don't get me wrong. I like a good device. I like metrics. I like numbers to assess. So I do invest in some, but the tape measure is something that every woman should have. And I also believe that it's not as triggering as the scale. Okay, the scale, you know, we've been jumping on that scale for decades for some of us. Um, and it has done a number literally to our minds. I think the tape measure, although it can be triggering for some, I'm not going to say that it's 100% without trigger. I, I do believe that it's more of like, you know, it's just a flat number. It just is. And by using this metric, we can help ourselves get better. The other thing that I really like about measuring waist to hip ratio in difference to the scale is that your waist to hip is not going to change overnight. It's not something that you're going to do a diet for like a week and a half, right? Okay. Hands raised. And then go to your measurement and say, oh gosh, I wonder how much my weight changed, my waist changed in, you know, in a short period of time. So I really like it because it's not something we do every day. In fact, I encourage people to do it monthly at the most. So that's going to help you eliminate any triggering, I hope, with the tape measure. And have somebody else do it for you. If you don't want to see the numbers, have a girlfriend, a spouse, a partner, whomever, do the tape measure for you. Keep your back to them. They put down the number on a piece of paper and they just let you know where you're going. Did you come down a little bit? Did you go up a little bit? Did you stay the same, right? So how or like why should we track our HRV? There's five reasons that I believe that tracking our waist to hip, I say HRV, I'm sorry, I have numbers on the brain. So five reasons why I believe you should track your um, waist to hip ratio. Here we go. The first one is an understanding that where your fat hangs is way more important than how much it weighs. Okay, there's different types of fat in the body. And what we're really paying attention to when we measure our waist to hip ratio is our visceral fat that is around our organs. This is what affects and impacts our metabolic and cardiovascular health. Where on the scale, we're just getting a, a, a number of fat. Now, yes, there are fancier scales where you can get a body fat percentage. But for the most part, it's a, you know, it's an aggregate score of your body fat throughout your whole body. Unless you're spending thousands of dollars on that scale or you're using a hand caliber and you're, you're measuring your fat from head to toe, what you're getting from a scale is not going to be all that accurate. Measuring your waist, on the other hand, is the way to go. Now, we talked a little bit about this idea that measuring ourselves can be triggering, whether it's a scale or a tape measure. I really do believe, and I encourage you to practice this, to think about it, to discern it, to get your tape measure out and work on it and see how you feel. But I do believe that it's informative without all the hate. I don't think we have like this, like I have a negative relationship with the scale. It's something that encourages me not to eat, it encourages me to eat. It, it drives me. And that's one of the reasons why I, I'm not happy with it because it's driving me, but yet it's driving me with like a false sense of health or a false sense of disease. It, it just, it, it doesn't add up for me. Where the tape measure, I don't have a relationship with it other than my mother was a seamstress and she used to make wedding dresses. And when I see tape measure, 
because as a kid, I used to step on pins all day long because my mother would make her own patterns when she was making wedding dresses. You can ask my brothers. We were constantly pulling uh, straight pins out of our feet. So tape measures remind me of my mom sewing, but I don't have necessarily a negative connotation. In fact, I would kind of put a tape measure in the same category as blood work. It just is what it is. It's very precise. It's the measurement of one thing, not a measurement of other things. A scale to me tells me more, it's more triggering because I start thinking about my value and my worth when I get on that box with the numbers. With a tape measure, I'm like, okay, this is what it is. It's just a number, no different than a number on my blood test. Now, here's another point. It's loyal rather than a fair weathered friend. The number you get from your waist, as long as you're measuring your waist at the same point, and we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes, every time you're getting consistent numbers, you can rely on the number. It doesn't change all that much. OK, now, yes, you can take bloating into effect and things like that because we're women and that kind of stuff happens. But believe it or not, when you start measuring that, it's it's minuscule and you can take notes and you can write it down and you can qualify that number in a way that you cannot qualify the scale, which is why I think the scale is a fair weathered front. We like scales when we like the number and we don't like scale so much when we don't like the number. And it's not indicative of what's really going on in our bodies. And, you know, it's not, it's, it's not our, die, our, our ride and die. We're a tape measure in your blood work. That can be a ride and die, a ride or die, buddy. Okay. The other thing that I like about it is it's personalized, not generic. Anybody who works with me knows that SEEK is all about helping women create, um, Bes uh, bespoke, personalized approaches to their well-being. Um, I'm not for the cookie cutter, cookie cutters. I'm not for the one size fits all, the trends and the fads. Again, I think that is more wellness industry hype so that we go in our wallets, dig out money and limit our, uh, you know, it, and then it starts playing with our heads. I, I just think the wellness industry has its place. Don't get me wrong. There's certain things that I really love about wellness that I've learned. Great teachers, great doctors. Oh, speaking of doctors. I always have to say this at some point in time in the video. I am not a medical professional. I'm not a registered dietitian. I am a well-being advocate who is creating this content to help you be more informed so that when you go to the doctor, when you go to your um, registered dietitian, when, when you go to any practitioner, that you have more questions to ask them that you feel like you can come to the conversation, you can come to the table with more information. That's all that I want for you. I want you to learn to, like I said, create a bespoke approach that's all about what you need and what your body needs. And so the biggest thing that I can bring to the table is to help you reunite with your body and begin listening to your body and all the information that it's giving you. Ditch the Dogma is about ditching all of the conventional wellness kind of crap and selling that's going on all around us and actually move internally into our bodies to see what our bodies really need. Is there a place for wellness? Absolutely. Do I have, I have a, like a, a wrong, wrong direction there. Oh, how does that work? That way. Um, I have books on my shelf. If I could turn my camera, you would see a, you know, a stack. Um, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of books from wellness and well-being. So I encourage you to be knowledgeable, to seek knowledge, to become an expert in the things that matter to you, but always do it with what your needs are customize it for you. Okay. So that's why I really like the waist to hip ratio because it, it's just a tape measure and it's just yours. It's your number. It's not a reflection of somebody else's number. And again, it's, it's, it's so yours that it's even beyond gender. Like, yes. And I'll, I'll, I'll get into this in a little bit too. There are numbers that are appropriate for a woman's ratio for her waist to hip and a, a guy's because women, we have more fat in our bodies. We carry babies. We have we have breasts and we have um, we have butts that are bigger and rounder. And, and it's just a part of who we are, especially as we age. Right. We all can talk about menopause and how, you know, the, the belly grows. I, I don't believe it has to grow with menopause. And I want to be really clear with that. I do believe that if you start listening to your body and monitoring your waist to hip ratio, 
and pay attention and make lifestyle changes that impact that number, you will see many, if not all menopause symptoms go away. And that's a conversation for another um, Ditch the Dogma episode, but I believe it, I've experienced it, and I know other people that have as well. Back to this measurement and being you and being personalized and bespoke. This measurement cheers you on every step of the way. It's letting you know if your lifestyle is, is impacting your waist. It's not yelling at you. It's very quiet. It's very subtle. In fact, I'm asking you to only monitor it once a month. So it's just a check-in. Our body is talking to us all the time. Our body is letting us know what we need. The tape measure, I hope that you will see it as a metric that encourages you to make longevity a priority. The strength of your body, your metabolic health, the, the, your ability to focus, to keep your, your, your memories, to know who you are. I have a family history of Alzheimer's. So waist to hip ratio for me has even more meaning because I have a generic Oh, not genetic, genetic, sorry, predisposition to Alzheimer's. So with that in mind, monitoring, paying attention to my waist to hip ratio is something that matters to me. And it's something that I want to pay attention to. And it helps me be accountable. If you're looking for, if you want to prioritize your well-being and accountability is something you struggle with, instead of the scale, you can use this measurement, one that's actually accurate to hold you accountable so that you can make small lifestyle changes that will help or decrease, in this case, your waist to hip ratio. So how do we measure and track our waist to hip ratio? So it's a really easy equation and I'm not a math person. So let me tell you just, you know, adding and subtracting is complicated for me. So this, this, by, this is not complicated, it's simple. You're gonna take your waist measurement and you're gonna divide it by your hip measurement. And that's your waist to hip ratio for men and for women. And um, with regard to metabolic and cardiovascular health, there are some thresholds to be aware of. So for a woman, we want to be below 0.85 for that percentage number. And for men, below 0.9. So what is the easiest way to track this? I told you that I was going to give you a tracker, something that you could download, that you could use once a month. In fact, I'm going to put a little picture of it up on the screen so that you can see what it looks like. It's so simple. It's got 12 little boxes. You're going to ID the month. I didn't put months on it because everybody starts at a different time. So if you start in April, you don't have one that starts in January, okay? And it's got a, a little slot on there for you to write your, um, the measurement of your waist, the measurement of your hips, divide the, you know, one by the other, and then you have your waist to hip ratio. And like I said, if numbers are triggering for you, which I get for some people, they are, you can have a spouse or a friend, a girlfriend, um, somebody do this for you. It's just once a month. And when it comes to measuring our bodies, now there's two ways to look at this. You can do that really narrow, higher waist, right at our, you know, right underneath our, our, um, right at our midsection above the belly button. And that's going to give you a false score. Now I know that where my waist, where my natural waist sits, that's where my belly bloat is at. That's where the, you know, the remnants, the reminders of the five home births that I had, that's where, that's where all that stuff hangs out. So be honest with yourself and place that tape measure at the natural thickest part of your waist. You know, like if you were buying a pair of jeans and they had belt loops and you were putting a belt on, that's what we want to, we want to measure. And, you know, I'll be honest, there was a time when like for me, because of my body type, when low rise jeans were really popular, I could easily squeeze into like a four or a six in low rise jeans because I had lean, long legs. But if I was putting on a pair of mom jeans or high waisted jeans, something that came up at my waist, I would go from a four to six to sometimes all the way up to a 10, generally an eight, but sometimes a 10 if it, if it was more of a narrow, a narrow waisted pant. So to go from six to a 10, 
That alone tells you that my metabolic health, cardiovascular health, that my waist to hip ratio made a lot of sense that that was not good for my body. So even though I was under 140 pounds, even though I had a great BMI, even though I have my biceps and triceps and quads and, and calves and really great muscle definition, none of that mattered because of my waist to hip ratio. Now, how do you get this tracker? I'm going to go ahead and give you a link now to see if I can put this up on the screen. So if you will head over to my website, www.ditchthedogma.com and then do a slash and then waist hyphen to hyphen hip hyphen tracker, then you will go to a, a page on my website where you can add your first name, your last name and your email address. Yes, this is joining my subscription. You can um, get rid of my um my newsletters and emails and things, there's not a lot. They come out no more than weekly, generally bi-monthly. Um, and you can get rid of them, but I want you to have the tracker, okay? So go ahead, go to my website and download your tracker. And um, I hope that you'll I hope that you'll use it and that you will see the difference that paying attention to your waist to hip ratio can have on your well-being and your longevity. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take this picture off the screen. There we go. So why is all of this so, like I keep saying it's so important to me. It's so important to me. It's important to me because I want to shift a narrative. And in many instances, um, when we talk about the body, we talk about aesthetics. We talk about what we look like. We talk about societal norms. We talk about what men like, right? There's this idea that the body is what defines us. And a lot of women have said, you know what? Forget that. I'm out of here. Body acceptance is about me accepting my body as it is. And that's it. I am not dieting anymore. I'm eating as much cake as I want. And you know what? I'm done. But on the other hand, and I'm going to go ahead and put this ticker, the, the little link away for now. On the other hand, there are like, I don't know, I can't speak for anybody but myself, but I would assume that because I want to know who the heck I am when I'm 70 years old, that there, there are other women that might want to know that, what, might want to know who they are, that that want mental clarity and mental focus. You know, I'm starting a business, I'm, uh, you know, in my 50s. I'm almost in my 60s. And the last thing that I want to lose right now is my brain. In addition to that, when I talk about well-being, when I talk about longevity, I want to be able to show up for the people in my life and to show up well and to show up often, to show up rested and excited to be with them, not exhausted all the time or bitchy, crabby, whatever you want to call it. So that is a component to me of what well-being and longevity looks like. I want strength in my body. I want to be able to grab four bags of groceries and get in the house and have it not be a big deal. I want to be able to someday, not yet, because my children aren't married yet, but someday I want to be able to carry my grandchildren and throw them up in the air and have fun. I don't want to be a fragile old woman. I don't. I, I may have gray hair, okay, because I don't, I didn't want to color it and I, I, we could do another episode on why I have gray hair, but I don't want to be fragile. I want to jump into adventure. I want to keep dreaming. I want to build my business. I, I want to do all the things. And to me, well-being is about that. And if I just embrace who I am, where I'm at, and I let my middle go because my arms and my legs are thin and I can throw on a pair of Spanx and then that ends all of that, that's not helping me with my brain. That's not helping me with my longevity. That's not helping me spiritually. It really isn't. And so that's why I want to encourage women, all women, to stop talking about body from an aesthetic perspective and start focusing on longevity. This is why I created the SEEK method in the first place. I, I ran my little video for you, okay? It told you a little bit about SEEK. I'd love to tell you a little bit more about SEEK and, and how it works. And so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here for a minute because right now um, I am launching my membership program. It is something that is priced um, in an accessible manner. It is not something 
that is cost prohibitive or has a high ticket type of association. In addition to that, we give up, I give out scholarships on a regular basis. If you want a part of SEEK and you cannot afford it, the likelihood that you're going to hear a no from me is slim to none. I want to help women. I want to grow my movement. I want to start a wellness rebellion. And so that's where I'm looking for payment so that I can help other women and continue to grow my business. But right now, until the end of March, we're going, we, I am in launch mode and I'm telling everybody about the SEEK method. So there's two ways to kind of start with us. There's a getting started, there's a ready for the deep dive, and then there's the program for wellness professionals. The, the workshop is kind of like we did today. Actually, two days ago, I did a workshop on waist to hip ratio. And I thought it was so important to pull it away from the paywall and make it something that all women could hear about on the Ditch the Dogma webs on the Ditch the Dogma live show. I did speak about it last week when I was promoting the workshop. And I, I told people why it was important, but I didn't give them the tracker. I didn't tell them how it works and why it's beneficial. I didn't explain how to get their metric. And that's what I chose to do today. Because I think if you alone choose for the next year to do nothing but attend my workshops and my live show and, and pay attention to your waist to hip ratio, that you could have unbelievable changes in your well-being and longevity. So the first option is just to become a workshop subscriber. Workshops are $10. There's two a month. So it's $20 a month. You can pay for them individually, or you can join a subscription model where you get it. One of the big bonuses though, is when you do the subscription model, if you've missed workshops in the past, you join. And like right now we've got two workshops already in the, in the library, you'll get all the um, recorded workshops as well. Our next step is to move into a deeper dive, which is joining the Seek Method course, membership, and community. Now, I'm not going to read all of this, but I hope you'll go and check it out. It is a year-long program where women come together once a week as a kickoff for our week to kind of hold ourselves accountable what we're working on. There are 52 lessons that are dropped throughout the year. By no means do you have to do them all. They're just to give you a little bit of variety and to add a little discernment as you try to figure out which practices resonate with you and which ones don't. And this way you don't have to spend a whole bunch of time on Google. All the work is done for you. You can message me with any questions that you have. And it's a really supportive community. Plus, you get access to all the workshops and all the recordings at no additional cost. For the entire year, that's 300 bucks. So when I say it's inclusive, I mean it. When I say it's accessible, I mean it. Nowhere will you work with a well-being advocate for an entire year where you're speaking with them live on camera once a week. Plus, you have the ability to message them and ask them questions and be a part of a community, plus get the workshops for 300 bucks. So I hope you'll consider it. The next phase is for those of you that are wellness professionals. Many wellness professionals are not talking about ways to hip ratio with their clients. And I want to change that. So coming into SEEK for well-being professionals, you're going to learn insight that maybe you don't already know or a little bit different than what you're working with. And in addition to that, I help you grow your business with um, content support. So we all know that if you're growing online, like here, I'm doing my live streams and it's not easy trying to figure out all this tech and make it all work. So that's what I help you with. I don't build your business from a strategic perspective and I'm not doing your creative work for you. We're coming together and we're supporting each other and, sh and sharing the tech that we're learning. I have a copy editor who's going to come in and help you with your, with your copy. I have an SEO strategist who's going to come in and not just talk about SEO, but what are the changes that you need to make on your specific website so that Google will actually find you. So I just wanted you to be aware of these options and that you would consider them if the if the conversations that you're listening to here over at Ditch the Dogma matter to you. Um, and I'm going to try, my cursor is fighting with me at the moment and I cannot get, there we go. And so now we're gonna go back over here and now you're just looking at me. So that's the role of SEEK. So I really hope that you will check out the SEEK method, that you will learn more about it and you'll consider joining us. Um, the one last thing here that I wanted to show you, I guess that's it.
So we did. We went through all the things. We talked about what waist to hip ratio is. I told you how, I'm going to take that off, how you can um, assess your waist to hip ratio. In fact, I'm going to put that link back on here so that you can see where to get your download. Ah, here it is. So if you go to my website, you'll be able to get the tracker. In fact, if you're on my mailing list, I'm going to send the tracker to everybody. So if you already are on the mailing list and you want the tracker, no worries. You're going to get it by end of day today, along with a recording of this Ditch the Dogma Live if you missed it. And, um, and that's really it. I really want to help women seek well-being. That simple. So I'm going to close this out with my little closing here for my brand and for my business. I hope that you that your well-being and that your longevity matter to you. And if they do, I hope you'll join us and become a seeker of well-being. It's really, it really makes a difference. I swear, I promise, I'm there for you. Everyone in the community as it's growing is there for you. And you won't find anything like this any, anywhere else. Welcome to Your Wellness Rebellion. It's time to remember what you already know. Reunite with your inner healer, your body. Build autonomy from the wellness industry. Implement practices that build your authority. And recognize that personal growth builds collective growth, both personally and professionally. This is the SEEK method. Sustain a connection with your inner spark in the universe. Empower your gut and intuition to carve a path that's uniquely yours. Embrace your body, listen to its whispers, and cherish it for the long haul. And kindle soulful growth and vibrate at a whole new frequency that everyone feels. Join us and become a seeker of well-being.